Welcome, everyone. Um, as you can see, Waylon is actually on site at another event as well. It's very busy. Um, but he is here with us to do his presentation on Chatbot Arena. So, um, Waylon, if you can just wave to everyone so they know that you are there and you're live. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Andy, we are all set for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So today I'm uh, so I'm Waylon. I'm a PhD student from UC Berkeley and the LMSS team. And today I'm very happy to share uh, our project, Chapa Arena, which is an open uh, crowdsourced platform for LM evaluations. So let's get started. Yeah, first I want to introduce the awesome team behind this effort, uh, the LMSS team. So we are, uh, our main goal is to focus on open LM research. And this team is funded by PhD student and faculty from UC Berkeley, Stanford, CMU, and UCSD. And our goal is to build open models and open data sets, as well as open sourcing all the serving systems and evaluation platform. You can learn more at the lmsys.org to check out our blog post and more, you know, learn more about us. So uh, LMSYS project uh, spans a uh, full stack of in the LM uh, scope. Uh, first, we have open model, as I mentioned, uh, we develop Mikunia and Longchain model. And we also have a work on evaluation, uh, which we develop Chapa Arena and Menti Bench. And Chapa Arena is the one I will go to, I'll go to talk about today. Uh, and we also have open data sets uh, that we uh, collected from uh, our demo. So we have LNSYS chat 1M, which is a 1M, uh, 1 million uh, conversation user LM conversations on our demo. And we also have, have Chirp Arena conversation. And lastly, we have also open source all the systems uh, behind these effort, uh, which is FastChat. So to uh, talk about, before we talk about Chirp Arena, uh, it has to, you know, the story actually started with the Vicuna. So, uh, Last uh, year, uh, in November, uh, ChatGPT released, and it basically shocked the entire world, and it's the most you know innovative breakthrough of the human history, one of. But it still remained a big mystery on how you know uh, OpenAI built it, and especially earlier this year, before you know anything, before any open source model can compete. Uh, we had no idea at this point. And uh, fortunately, uh, we have Meta uh, released the, uh, the Llama model uh, in uh, in end of the February, and which is the uh, a high quality foundation based uh, LMs uh, uh, released. Um, and very shortly after it, uh, there are research community in research uh, in Stanford, uh, basically fine tune this uh, base model uh, with uh, some uh, conversation data, and then basically fine tune it from base model to chat model. And which uh, surprised the world that, oh, we finally have the capability to make something, make some open, open model that behave like this, you know, chat conversation capability. So we at Berkeley, we are student at Berkeley, and we wonder if we can do better. So uh, we believe that the data quality is the key to uh, to to get you a better model. So we we collected a high quality data set called Share, Share GPT, which is like a seventy thousand high quality user chat GPT conversations uh, that user shared online. So there are a few key uh, components. One is data quality, uh, which because uh, this is like, you know, chat GPT answer. So you know that uh, that is uh, significantly better. And as well as multi-turn conversation. So this is the, you know, the kind of like the magic component of the these models LM these days. 
it has the uh, capability to interact with it. You can ask questions, follow up questions, and so on. So this multi-turn conversation is also a key, key thing. And another thing is longer context lens. So because you know we ask a lot of follow-up questions, the context lens can be longer and longer, and we need a kind of like high quality data to, to um, uh, have co longer content lens and the model can learn how to do this. So this is the, we think that this can make a huge difference. So we decided to launch the Vicuna project very, very shortly after APACA, which is released in mid-March uh, or so. And this kind of like is a fun project in our lab that we decided to just uh, stop everything we're doing for, for one, one week, two week, just focus on this because we think we can make some impact and we can uh, tell something new uh, to the world. So uh, after Alpaca, like two, three weeks after Alpaca's really, we uh, we trained Vicuna, which is uh, the one of the first high quality open chat models released to the world. And uh, that's in, 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 in end of March. And you can see the capability of uh, from Lama, Apaka to Vicuna, we, we, we try to measure, you know, how much improvement we get from Apaka to Vicuna, and we, 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 we find it's significant, and we try to measure it, so this number was, like, kind of, like, a very preliminary result we published in March, and since then, but uh, from the, and then we released the demo to the world, it got viral, it got millions of uh, views on Twitter, and so on. So since then, uh, we have made some impact. Uh, uh, since then, uh, Vic Vicuna has been widely adopted. Uh, there are over uh, 5 million downloads and our demo server <clears throat> served like over three, like singly for Vicuna, we serve over two, three million chat requests. And our blog post got almost 500 citations. Uh, which enable several research in the field of uh, vision language research. People can now take our model uh, to uh, and then combine with some vision and language data set to fine tune a vision language model. This was not possible if, uh, if you don't have an open model. And you also en enable some of the AI safety research. So before ChatGPT was like a black box API, and now you have full access to the Vicuna's open weight. So you can do more like a uh, white box kind of like a tag research and so on. And then study whether this can be transferred to ChatGPT, which they succeed. So we enable some of the AI research and, and more. So, um, but what's next for us uh, in uh, April? So we think, uh, as a researcher, we think two major issues still exist. So the first one is how, how to evaluate LM properly. Because nowadays like LM's capability is like evolving too fast. And traditional uh, evaluation benchmark is not uh, just not able to catch this speed. So we are very behind in the evaluation. And also the second point is since we uh we have seen the success for Vicuna is basically you know using a high more high quality dialogue data and so on. So the second issue is for the open community, how can we continue to collect high quality data set? So that's two major questions for us. And let's dig into the first one. So first one, LM are very hard to evaluate because they can they handle very general, you know, open-ended task. And it has sometimes unstructured text input and outputs are not you know, also not structured, so hard to compare, you know, and then hard to get ground truths and so on. And also it in, interacts with users with multi-turn conversations. So this is was not the case before the before it was it was always like a question answer and then in the end. So this multi-turn situation is also very hard to deal with. <clears throat> And there are a few limitations in uh, existing uh, benchmarks. So uh, a few limitations here is 
one is uh, for example for some knowledge focused benchmark uh like mmlu uh they focus on uh just multi choice questions answer and so on so it's not very open ended and not really uh testing the model's capability in conversation skill right and um, this, and then also there are other benchmark has single turn or involving human annotation effort and so on. So then, or they are too easy. So yeah, and or they are too easy. And finally is they are also the huge risk of contamination, which, which means your test data can be already in your training data. So nowadays in, in LM, <clears throat> in, in basically in LM pre-training, People try to scrape uh, the internet or you know, data over the internet, and you don't really know whether there are like, already test data inside your training data. So you don't know whether the model is uh, really generalized to that these you know, knowledge in benchmark or they are just memorizing the uh, training data. So these are, are, are pretty big questions we try to uh, answer. And so, so basically, a whole problem here is, you know, how do we construct from how do we construct these uh, user questions that can use to evaluate LM, and how how can we get a human feedback to decide which one is better? <clears throat> so, um, in uh, shortly after the Kuna's launch, we discuss we we think this is a, you know, the the one of the biggest issues in the space now because every day there's a new model. Coming up, till still today, right? Like, and then we have no little idea on what's going on, and then these benchmark numbers may not be that accurate, accurate uh, in capturing all these uh, nuances we we uh, discuss, uh, we, we we mentioned. So, in May, we decided to launch a crowdsource platform um, to collect real world human conversations and feedback. So. That means is big basically. Yeah, we cannot we cannot so so to answer the first first two questions to construct prompt and get human feedback. We 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 think it has to be real world. It has to be leave to the user to decide how they are going to use the LM for, and then how they they are they they think which one is uh, you know which LM is better and so on. So we try to develop a platform to experiment this idea. So this comes to Chapa Arena, which is the new evaluation we, we propose. And it's basically, uh, its idea is very simple. It's a crowdsource anonymous battle between LMs. So you, you go to a website, our website, and you can ask any questions. So for example, here we ask, uh, write me a blog post about how I eat. And then you will get two model answer this prompt, uh, model A, model B, and they are basically anonymous. So after they finish, a user can look at the answer and then decide uh, is A better or B better or there's you know tie similar. So very simple idea. And oh as as well as and, and user if user cannot decide, user can continue chatting. So you can ask follow-up questions and so on to until you identify a winner. So uh, since it's launched in May, uh, we have basically operating this platform for uh, like uh, six months and so, and we have collected over 1, uh, 100,000 user votes, uh, prompt and votes. And we use this, uh, so basically we have the vote, so we can basically compute the pairwise win rate uh, as I show in on the on the left, so these are like win rate between different LMs like GPT four Cloud or um these open model Llama models and and so on. So very many models here, and you can we can we visualize it here. It's a heat map showing that okay, this is the GPT four versus other models win rate and so on. And using this um, pairwise comparison data. We can actually develop a scalable model ranking uh, system uh, through ELO rating system. So ELO rating is a very commonly used uh, rating system in in many you know games 
sports and so on, like chess. So basically you have the, the data you have is the pairwise, you know, uh uh pairwise compared between players and you use that to to estimate kind of like the uh rating which represent which the difference of the rating represent uh the estimated uh the predicted win rate of the two player. So as you can see here, yeah, we have um uh, basically published a leaderboard based on all these <clears throat> comparison data. And now we can see you know all these proprietary models still leading the space. And but uh we have seen uh many new open models are catching up. So it's pretty promising. And you can scan that QR code for the four leaderboard. So Arena has since this launch made up some impact here. We get shout out from industry, from OpenAI, uh, 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 Greg Brockman and Andrew Kapsi, they all uh, uh, retreat our effort. And we also have Anthropic, Hugging Face, Mitchell and so on. Uh, uh, industry leading, you know, uh, LM companies, they recognize our effort and we think uh we think uh, it has been you know uh establish some of the trust and openness and we uh we commit to we basically we are committed to make a open and transparent make this effort open and transparent but by releasing all the code we use and data sets and so on so if you are curious you can now just visit our website for the demo at this chat.lmsys.org and which you can find like 20 plus uh, basically cutting edge LMs uh, in the field right now. And you can ask any questions and contribute your vote. So the values of uh, Triple Arena, um, I want to say is, so first one obviously is we can use this as a platform to evaluate and rank models, as you can see. But in addition, we can also use this platform to collect valuable data and valuable human feedback. So right, uh, as you can imagine, right now people come to the site and ask questions and so on. These are like valuable data to get because uh, we don't, right now LM is a very new field and we, we are still in very early stage on understanding how people use LM, and we very we are very interested in these you know, use cases and how people interact with LM and so on. So these data that can be valuable resources to study, and as well as the human feedback loop. So we get you know feedback on when when was this model is better than what. So this can be used. We think this can be used to further improve the model. So first identify the model's weakness and then improve the model. So <clears throat> yeah, so Triple Arena right now we position as it as an open, scalable and interactive data collection platform. And just like we're trying to build something like Wikipedia for LM. And to demonstrate uh, the use case, we also, we in uh, two months ago in, in sep uh, September, we released the very first large scale LM conversation data set, which is a 1 million uh, real world conversations from our 200K users. Uh, basically how they interact with, with LM and so on. And we study a few use cases. First is, as you can see, you know, real world is very, Real world is noisy, contains some uh, things you don't uh, things that can be unsafe and so on. So you can actually use this data set to develop a content moderation model that can be on par with uh, OpenAI's moderation API as, or even GPT-4. And second is you can use this data set to build a hard benchmark functions that can effectively differentiate models and the last one is we study how to use this data set to train a better model. So these are potential use case, and then we publish it on 
right now it's on archive and will hopefully be appear in the uh, in in uh iClear conference next next year. And you can download the data set on our hugging base page now. Yeah. So we also and then we also open source the system behind Arena, which we call it Fast Shut. And since then, it has been widely used by uh, many industry and academia group. And we have got, got 30,000 uh, GitHub stars just a few days ago. And we also had a lot of contrib contributors, 200 plus, uh, helping us to um, maintain this project and so on. So which is really a like, great effort. And of course, there are uh, more topics can be further uh, investigated. Uh, we are also on uh, this ongoing effort now. So uh, first one is how can we prevent cheating and how can we identify malicious user and so on that, you know, just vote randomly or just vote for some specific models. And a second big question is how can we continue to incentivize users uh, organic engagement uh, uh, encourage them to come back, ask questions, and vote. And the third one is, uh, how do we filter low quality prompts, uh, low quality vote and prompts? And the last one is, uh, can we have developed some efficient sampling algorithm for sampling these models? Because as you can see, if you just do random sampling, uh, and you know you sample a very strong model, a very weak model, that doesn't tell you much information. So uh, we are also uh, investigating how to improve this. And because you know we have very limited human resources, human interactions on this website. So we want to uh, maximize the, the uh, maximize the, the outcome, yeah. So I think that comes to the end. So I, I want to acknowledge uh, the great team behind this, all these effort. So we have, a core student team uh, maintaining and developing new features on this site. And we also have a faculty team helping us to uh, uh, advise all the giving great advice. And we also thank our sponsor for generous support on this uh, platform. Without them, they, we, we are not you know, going to, uh, it's not possible to operate this service. So uh, lastly is uh, just a few contact. Uh, you can visit our homepage to learn more about our projects. And we also have a demo that you can play with and we have open source code and data models uh, here. So with that, uh, yeah, I conclude my talk here. Thanks. Thank you so much. And we do have a couple minutes left. Does anyone have a question? Oh, we do have one question. So you mentioned some of the work that you're uh, planning to do to improve like, you know, bad input or whatever. How big of a, a problem is that right now for the data set? So surprisingly, it's not too bad. So we found that maybe just 3%. So we have some preliminary way to filter them. And we found that just probably less than 5% of the data is like that. So most of the users are like you know, pretty organic. They ask their own task, own questions on this platform. And they come here you know, not to waste their time or our time. They come here to find an answer because they find the value, they also found, found some values on our platform because I think the major one is we offer free service, uh, free GPT-4 for people to use. So yeah, I think most of the prompt are pretty uh, real world tasks and so on. Yeah. Great, thanks. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. I did take a quick look at the, uh, the, the um, arena where you can type in any question and compare two models. A very clever idea, but of course those questions can cover any topic. Um, and then you talked about your data set that was live conversations. I'm just kind of curious 
if you think there's value in, in trying to set up similar constructs, but focused on narrow topics, you know, rather than just a model that can answer anything, you know, a lot of the custom GPTs and, and RAG, all are kind of focusing models on specific topics. And I'm wondering is if you looked at the data, whether you think there's value in trying to benchmark within specific topic areas. Yes, yes, yes. That's a very great question. So I actually forgot to put it here in the slide. So we are also working on categorization. And basically, uh, for example, we can start simple. Let's say we, we only filter all the coding questions, coding related questions, and see how it looks like. How is it different from the general, you know, leaderboard we have seen, or some model are actually better in coding and some are not. So this effort is also ongoing. Uh, thank you for the great talk and uh, really upholding open source AI principles. So I present Genetify Commons and the AI, AI Alliance, and I wonder if LMC is basically a loose alliance of students and faculty, or is it planning to be an open source organization that can join, for instance, Linux Foundation or AI Alliance? How are you guys planning to proceed after students graduate and get academic jobs and so forth? Yeah, so currently still a loose uh, organization that, you know, just consists of students, faculty, and so on. And But we are discussing how to make this effort more sustainable, how to make these projects, uh, how to make, you know, community involvement, like, or more contributor developers and so on. So this is still in progress discussion, but we would love to hear your, your feedback. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That is all the time that we have. And we, Lynn, thank you so much for joining us. And let's give Thank him you. another hand. Thank you.